Good morning, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. Hope everyone's having a blessed morning so far. You know, um, while I was out evangelizing, I was approached by a Muslim. Muslims don't understand who Jesus was, you know what I'm saying? They don't understand what he came down here for. And they don't understand that he was God made manifest in the flesh. They just don't understand it. So we just went on and on. And he still wasn't listening. He was hard headed, hard hearted, whatever. Or maybe just misinformed. So I explained to him, and what I explained to him is the purpose of Jesus coming to earth. And I explained to him the five things that Christ's resurrection accomplished. Because they don't understand that he died and rose again. They can't understand that God actually came down to earth in the form of a man as the last resort for us to be saved because he tried everything else and we failed him consistently. Okay, so let me explain what I, um, let me read out what I explained to him. I had to write it down because we was talking for like a long time. I, I looked it up and I wrote it down. The five things that Christ's resurrection accomplished the bodily resurrection of Christ is a fundamental of Christianity. This means it defines the Christian faith. No one can be a Christian without it. I took him to 1 Corinthians 15, 14. 1 Corinthians 15, 14. This may sound severe, but saying anything less neglects what the resurrection of Christ accomplished. Why does Christianity depend on the resurrection of Christ? What does it mean for us? One, to declare himself the son of God. This is what gets them all the time. Jesus claimed the ability to raise his own self from the dead in John 2, verse 19. This is the power of God. He told Israel that the sign that proved he was the son of God would be his resurrection. Matthew 12, 39 and 40. Jonah came out of the whale alive. You heard that? Jonah came out of the whale alive. Jonah is a metaphor for the resurrection of Christ. And Paul also testifies to this resurrection declaration in Romans 1, verse 4. If he did not resurrect, then he would be a liar, not the promised Christ, and not God manifest in the flesh. 2. The second thing that Christ accomplished at the resurrection Payment for sins. Payment for sins. This is crucial. You may be thinking that it was through the, his debt and shed blood that he provided the atonement for sins. And you would be right. However, if he did not resurrect, his debt would not mean anything. You can find this in 1 Corinthians 15, 17. The resurrection of Christ not only proved he was the eternal God, the giver of all life, but that his work to pay for sins through his death was sufficient and complete. Without resurrection, his death would have been a good effort, but that, but that would be like writing a check without money in the bank. And what happens? When you write a check without money in the bank, it bounces, it's no good. It's worthless. His resurrection meant the trick was cast and the work was finished. 
His resurrection meant the check was cashed and the work was finished because Jesus bowed his head, hung his head low, and he said, it is finished. He had accomplished the will of God the Father. The surgery is not over until the doctor walks out of the surgery room. The cooking is not done until the turkey comes out of the oven. Your sins were not paid in full until Christ rose from the dead. You heard that? Your sins were not paid in full until Christ rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. Okay, number three. The third thing that Christ's resurrection accomplished. Number three. Jesus Christ is the Savior. If the Savior is still dead, then how would you know why he died or that he died willingly or that he died for you? Scripture describes Jesus as a mediator. You can find this in 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. But if the mediator is dead, then future reconciliation is impossible. If the mediator is dead, then further reconciliation to God is impossible because without Jesus, we can have a relationship with God because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And God said, those that know it, my son, shall have everlasting life. But those that know it, not my son, are already condemned. Jesus is the mediator for man and God. Man and God. You know, like the go-between. Right. Okay. Christ revealed the mystery of the gospel after his resurrection. Christ revealed the mystery of the gospel after his resurrection. Yes. Everything was done at the cross so that our faith in him and our souls would not be lost. Amen. Christ could only offer free salvation by grace. His work for you, that is grace. His work for you, what he did for us is grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Christ could only offer free salvation by grace through faith if he had already finished the work and he was not dead. If Christ is still dead, our faith is dead and so is any hope of salvation. You heard? Let's go over that one more time. If Christ is still dead, in other words, if he didn't resurrect, if he didn't rise from the grave, and if he wasn't who he claimed to be, then our faith is dead because we are putting faith in something that doesn't exist or something that didn't exist. And so is any hope of salvation. Jesus said, I rose from the dead and so shall you. So then if this is not true that he rose from the dead, where's our faith at? There is no faith. There is no, there is no res uh, resurrection. There is no salvation. Okay, reason number four. Number four. 
righteousness imputed to us. Righteousness. For he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that we might have the righteousness of God in him. In him. In Jesus. Because when you're in Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, you have the righteousness of God in you through Jesus. He did everything at the cross for us. Number four is righteousness imputed. The resurrection of Christ proves his own righteousness. After dying for the sins of the world, if he were not perfectly righteous in so doing, he would not deserve to live again. In other words, in the Old Testament, the Israelites had to make sacrifices, sacrifices with an unblemished and unblemished lamb. Unblemished, which means clean, clean. Jesus was the only man on this earth that did not sin, that lived a perfect life. And he came to this earth, not only to save us, but to show us how to live, to show us the things that we must do in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. Starting with the voice in the wilderness, John the Baptist, baptism, obedience, repentance, is that a word? Well, it is now, I just made it. Repentance, you know, repenting, all these things that Jesus did, praying for people, laying hands on people, healing the sick, casting out demons, all these things that Jesus did sit is an example for us on what we should be doing and the future of what we will be doing. After dying for the sins of the world, if he were not perfectly righteous in so doing, he would not deserve to live again, just like the rest of us. It is only here by his resurrection that his righteousness can be imputed to us. The gospel does not start with our sins being put on Christ. It must finish with this with his righteousness being imputed to us second corinthians 5 verse 21 without christ's resurrection and righteousness we could never be justified by faith romans 4 22 23 24 and 25 without his resurrection and righteousness we could never be justified by faith because God said nothing unclean can enter the kingdom of heaven and it is Jesus who makes us clean it is Jesus who gives us righteousness after he makes us clean and that's after we repent and come to him he makes us clean he said I will make you as white as snow he said, I will remember your sins no more. He said, I will cast your sins into the depths of the sea and I will remember them no more. He makes us clean, he makes us whole, he makes us complete and we shall have glorified bodies when Jesus comes. All of us, all of us saints, all of us who believe in him and walk with him every day, we will have glorified bodies. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being in heaven with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and all the saints throughout history, throughout scriptures? Can you imagine walking hand in hand with Jesus, talking to Moses, talking to Paul, talking to Peter, talking to Paul who used to be Saul? I got a lot of questions for him, that's for sure. 
And I'm going to ask Moses a lot of questions as well. Because Moses was, Moses was just awesome. Okay, where was I? Okay, number five and the final reason. Number five, the things that the resurrection of Jesus accomplished. Number five is to, to give us power of eternal life. Eternal life. Christ's bodily resurrection exhibited the power to raise humanity from the dead. Mm -hmm. The promise of eternal life would be nonsense. The promise of eternal life would be nonsense if the Savior ended his life with death never to live again. There is no life found in a dead savior. Am I right about it? There is no life found in a dead savior. Jesus Christ defeated death throughout his resurrection, alive forevermore to guarantee eternal life. It is the power of his resurrection that he offers to us throughout the gospel. Without the bodily resurrection of Christ, we could not live the Christian life. There would be no life in Christ. Without his bodily resurrection, we would be living a fruitless and uneventful and unchristian life without the resurrection. Much like the pagans. Life and immortality was only brought to light at the appearing of Christ after his resurrection. Life and immortality. You can find this in 2 Timothy 1, verse 10. Without Christ's resurrection, we are all dead. We are all dead. There is no life. There is no life because this world will just end with everybody dying. There'd be no life. There'd be no 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 new life in Christ. There would be no heaven. There would be no salvation. We would just all die and that's it. And the world would probably not exist anymore. It'd just be an empty world. Conclusion. Conclusion, all of these things depend on the bodily resurrection of Christ. Everything rides on the bodily resurrection of Christ. Without these things being accomplished, we do not have any reason to worship Christ Jesus. There is no reason at all to worship Christ Jesus without any of these things happening. And also... We have no reason to preach Christ for salvation or to declare righteousness in Christ or eternal life through Christ. See, we're not preaching just to preach. We're not teaching just to teach. We're, teach, we're teaching the true gospel and the truth about Jesus and his resurrection. In summary, we would not be Christians unless Christ rose from the dead, unless he rose from the dead. It is no coincidence that most of these reasons are found in the epistles where the mystery of Christ is revealed. And it was Paul who said, 
Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. 2 Timothy 2 verse 8. Okay, so in ending, Christianity is not a religion filled with religious followers of a religious figure. The Christian faith rests on the resurrection. It is by that gospel of the resurrected Christ that we are saved. The Pharisees called themselves religious, but they denied that Christ was the Son of God. They denied that he was the Messiah. Matter of fact, they just denied him, period. So a religion does not impute any righteousness, does not impute salvation, and does not impute faith or belief in the one and only true God. A religion is just a title. That's all it is, is a title. God does not look at titles. God looks at your heart does not look at your title. If you call yourself an archbishop, that does not mean you're saved. You call yourself a pope or the pope, that does not mean you're saved. You call yourself a pastor, that does not mean you're saved. Anybody can impute a title to themselves, that doesn't mean they're saved. That's all it is, it's a title. Just like a wolf in sheep's clothing who's lying to the congregation and calls himself an apostle, a pastor, an archbishop. You know, that doesn't make you say because you're not preaching the gospel and you're not walking by God's word. You're not walking with Jesus. You're deceiving the congregation, you're deceiving the sheep. You know what I'm saying? So, God doesn't look at titles, religion, Baptist, Den all these denominations out here means nothing. God looks at your faith, your heart. And it is he who will pass judgment on all of us on that glorious getting up day. Amen. All right. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. Okay? Y'all stay blessed, you hood.